Welcome to this video. I'm going to work through a few gravitational equilibrium problems. Then we're going to do a few uh, planetary motion, uh, planet orbital speed problems. Okay, we're going to get started. We have two point masses in this problem. A first one, M1, is 15 kilograms. And a second one, M2, is 25. I'm going to make that one bigger because it's a larger value. They are 60 meters apart. Find where a third point mass should be placed so that the net gravitational force on the third is zero. Okay. So I'm, I know it's going to have to be, so here's my third point mass. And I know it's going to have to be closer to the smaller mass of the two between this one and this one. It has to be closer to the smaller one because this one naturally pulls harder. So we have to move M3 away, farther away, from the bigger mass to reduce the force. And the reason we have to reduce the force is because our goal is for the pull by 1 on 3. That pull should be equal and opposite to the pull by 2 on 3. So the first arrow I drew there was, I'm going to put this below, was the pull, the force of 1 on 3. The second arrow was the force of 2 on 3. The force of 2 on 3. Pulling to the right. This distance I'm going to call R12, the distance between 1 and 2. And that distance is R23. And I have an obvious correction to make. This is not R12. It's the distance between 1, this is 1, the distance between 1 and 3 is this little sliver. Okay, so we have stipulated that the force of 1 on 3 is balancing the force on two of 2 on 3. These forces balance so that the net is 0. They cancel each other out. So when we add them up, they balance out. There's nothing left. On the left side, I'm going to replace F13. I'm going to substitute in using Newton's law of gravitation. And I'm going to make the same substitution on the right side, except the right side is the attraction between 2 and 3. So those are the values, the subscripts that I use here. Oops. And it's R23 squared. Right. The G's cancel out the M3s cancel out. I'm going to bring uh, R13 squared over to the right side and R23 squared to the left. And I have R23 squared equals like that. M2 over M1. I know those values, right? M2 is 25. M1 is 15. I'm going to square root both sides. R13 squared can come out of the radical, and when it does, it becomes a plain old R13. And radical 25 over 15 is, let's see, oops, that is 1.15. And R23 is now like this. Except I'm going to switch the place of this and the coefficient so that the coefficient really is a coefficient out front. OK. Now, looking at that, I'm going to go back up to the top. R23, this sliver, is equal to 1.29 R13. So if I add up R13 plus another 1.29 R13, the total distance is 60. One R13 plus 1.29 R13 is 2.29 times that R value. And if we divide both sides by 2.29, 
we get that R13 is 26 meters. And I'm going to, let's see, how many sig figs should I have? Well, this value has 3, this has 3, that has 3, so my, my answer, my final answer should have 3. So let me add a decimal place. It's 26.2 meters. Next one, here it is. Okay, we have two point masses. The first is 9 kilograms. The second is smaller, only 2 kilograms. M2. And where does the third go? It's going to have to be closer to the little mass and farther from the big mass. This distance is R13. That distance is R23. And together, they add up to 40 meters. Now we are placing M3 so that the force of gravity, the force of 1 pulling on 3, balances the force of 2 pulling on 3. So for each of these, I'm going to make the replacement using Newton's law of gravitation for the left side and also for the right side. Once again, M3 cancels out, G cancels out. So if I rearrange this, I have R23 equals radical M2 over M1, and then outside of the radical, not underneath, but outside is that. So R23, if I plug into my calculator this right here, right? what do I want? I want to plug in radical, what's M2? M2 is 2 over M1, which is 9. Radical 2 over 9 is 0.414, like that. And I can take this away. So what do we have here? We have R13 plus R23 is the full 40. But R23 can be replaced with that. So I'm going to write this line once more. 414 equals 40 meters. So this is like saying, you know, if it were 1x plus 2x, they would combine to make 3x. But we don't have 1x and 2x. We have 1 R13 and 0.414 R13. So that gives this. You divide both sides by 1.414. Uh, and what do we get? 27.2 meters. Now, is that too many sig figs? Hmm, let me look back. This has two sig figs. That has two. This has three sig figs. The fewest number of sig figs from the givens is two. So the answer has two, the least, uh, the, the smallest number, not three. Three is not the smallest. Two is. So I come down and I round my answer up to 27. 27, there we go. All right, next one. First point mass is 20, and the next one is huge. The next one is 10 times the size, 200. We are going to have to take the third point mass and put it closer to the 20 kilogram point mass. This distance is the distance from 1 to 3. This distance is the distance from 2 to 3. And it should really go to the center of the of the mass. Although they're point masses, so they didn't really they shouldn't have a center, they should just have a single point. That's okay. We like to draw our bigger point masses larger just to make it clear. Okay, the total distance from one to the other is one meter. We place M3 so that the force, so that one's pull is equal to 2's pull. 
to mass 2's pull. The force is balanced, putting it in equilibrium. The net gravitational force is zero. On the left side, we replace using Newton's third, uh, sorry, whoa, Newton's law of gravitation, and we do the same on the right side. The G's cancel out, the M3's cancel out. I'm going to rearrange, so I'm going to solve for R23, and I get radical M2 over M1, right, the M1 comes down, I square root, because that's squared, and then the R13 comes up, but it's outside of the coefficient, because when I square root it, the squared goes away, and it comes out from under the radical. So the square root, what's this, this value here? Let me calculate that right now. M2 is 200, so what's radical? Oh, this is going to be nice, 200 over 2. 200 over 2 is 100, and radical 100 is just 10. So I have this. That problem came out nice, nice and round number. So now, what do I do next? I use that right here. The next thing I want to do is say R12 plus R23 is 1. But R23 is equal to and replaceable with 10 R13. So I have 1 R13 plus 10 R13, or 11 R13 is equal to a meter. So we divide both sides by 11, and 1 over 11 gives us point n point 0 0.09, and the 0 0.09 repeats. So how many sig figs did I have? Hmm. This has 3 sig figs, this given has 4, that given has 2, which is the fewest number of sig figs from the givens. So I round my answer to two sig figs.